Hey guys, here's the scene that we're going to be denoising today. So for the elephant, we have this um, green marble sort of jade type of stone material that has this nice little details, like all those veins and those little cracks um, that we want to preserve during the noising process. And just to add a little bit of more complexity, I've added this placement to our um, cloth uh, object and some of those little fibers, you know, as you can see, um, those little strands that's sticking out. Because um, we also want to preserve those. That, that, that's our sharp details that we want to keep. So assuming denoise is going to smooth that all out. Um, now, before we start to look at different type of denoisers that we have here in Maxwell, uh, let's quickly see how the scene was set up. Okay, so here's the Maxwell Studio. Um, and as you can see, it's, um, it's pretty simple. I just have a few light sources, few materials, um, this one's not even participating in the scene, it's just from the old scene with the table, you know. Um, then I have a few cloth materials, one for the cloth itself and the other one for the fibers. And let me show you real quick the, um, how the scene is set up. Now, as you can see, the, the cloth was very quick and dirty simulation done in Maya. Nothing special, nothing, you know, any, any nothing uh, complex. So it's just a simple simulation, whatever, drop the cloth, okay? Um, as you can see, here what we have a few light sources. We have one light source here, one here, one here, and one at the back, um, specifically for, for the rim light. This one goes for the another rim light, which is actually our kind of key light. It's one of those cases when your key light is your rim light. This um, eliminates uh, the shadow areas. It's not very bright. It's just a little bit there so that it, they don't go like fully dark. But this is our key light from the left that gives us the shadows and defines them, the elephant in general. But that, that's it. It's all just evenly illuminated, like a bit randomly, a bit, you know, like not nothing preset. It's not a studio lighting. It's just, you know, whatever, elephant on the bed, on the carpet, something like that. Okay, so here's our setup. Now the camera is the same thing, um, same deal. I'm using a pretty weird sensor actually here, like film back 18 by 18 millimeters. That is not very realistic, but this is my choice to use it because I know how to use that. Elephant material, it's a marble elephant right here. I have one base layer that defines the color and two gloss layers. Um, each one has a simple BSDF inside. Uh, so that's the that's that's it. That's pretty much it. And for the base, as you can see, I have a bunch of different BSDFs, only one of them switched on, and that's green, right? If I'll switch, say, um, say red, um, you'll see it works the same way, it just changes the, the base image behind it. Uh, it's very simple. I didn't even set the reflectance zero or something. Um, so it's just super simple. Over here I did. Okay. Uh, roughness and the whatever. Nice and simple. Okay, now for the cloth um, of fabric, um, we have it's actually a substance uh, painter material, or rather, substance designer that I just converted in a displacement. The only thing I did here on this, yeah, the, the, the reason why I converted it actually to the uh, layered material from just substance material is I wanted to change the, the UV um, tiling a little bit. I figured out that it's like when it repeats just once, it's, it's just a bit too big. Um, so I wanted to have a little bit smaller pattern. I uh, just figured out it works better with the scale of the elephant figurine. So, so that's why I converted it and I make it 1.5 inch. Uh, and that's, that's, that's all I did, nothing else. Okay. Now, in terms of the fibers, as you can see here, I don't know if you guys can see that. Uh, let me zoom in a little bit. There's actually quite a, quite a lot of, uh, you know, fibers, as you can see. Those are applied to cloth geometry uh, modifiers in the Maxwell grass. So I have two different Maxwell grass 
um, well, modifiers applied. Uh, one is for their the bigger, longer strands. The other one is for the shorter one. Um, I don't know if I can, yeah, you can see. So it's like that. And they have the grass, mate uh, grass material. Uh, and grass material has the same texture as here, as the, the cloth to um, channel one. Make sure it's channel one. So it's coloring the strength. So it's like if the, the you know, this, um, the treads or fibers that go in the white area of the texture, they become white and black, black, brown, brown, whatever you get the point. So that is, that is it. It doesn't have any bump, displacement, whatever. It's just like a little bit rough, a little bit, you know, shiny. Uh, nothing crazy. And that is uh, pretty much it for my environment. I'm using HDR image uh, with just a little offset, uh, five degrees. Um, yeah, and that's it. Just HDR image and a few light sources. Okay, so here's our render. Um, as you can see, it took us um, 19 minutes and 40 seconds and it reached sample level of 10. Now, I deliberately let it run more than 10 minutes, unlike the previous two scenes, because I figured out that my computer might be uh, not as fast as your computer, so the time that it gets to the sampling level of 10 could be different. While I'm happy with the noise in the background, or here and there, I would definitely prefer to have uh, things cleared out uh, in the shadow area. So noise here, or say here, doesn't really bother me at all, but noise uh, somewhere in this area uh, does, right? Because that's something not very nice. Uh, maybe not completely remove it because it's natural to have some sort of grain, but, you know, clean it up a little bit. Okay, so as you can see, my uh, it's um, uh, the method of denoising is fast. I'm using at the end. Um, and uh, yeah, so here's the settings that I've used. As you can see, I'm almost removed the color influence, color influence two. Uh, I have reduced the feature influence to 0 0.2 from 0 0.6. That was the default value. And final pass from 0 0.450 to 0 0.150, so like three times. Um, and here's the result. As you can see, the noise is still quite quite a bit. I mean, this this area becomes very very uh, clean. The the fibers that I was worrying about, they are all there. Ooh, they are all still here. We started to lose some of them uh, in this area, it's like opacity or something, but very fine one, very thin. Um, they are still still here. So I say that's a win. Now, I do have a sense of uh, the texture on the elephant being a little bit um, out of focus. But honestly, I think that's my camera settings because this is like definitely out of focus already because that's like um, what we call it. Uh, it's a 50mm camera, if I'm not wrong. Um, it doesn't show it here because it's the MXS, uh, MXI opened. And my focus uh, distance is somewhere around this central area. That's why it's quite sharp here, this area. But even here, I still see that it's um, a little bit soft. Um, but most likely it's due to the nature of the texture that I have. So it's kind of an abstract side, right? So that's the fast. Um, fast method of denoising, which I think is quite efficient. Um, and just to uh, show you more, I've did also the same render, same scene. Everything is the same, but I, I, I used a um, uh, different type of denoiser, which is not fast, but rather accurate. And here it is. So this, um, again, the original one, the denoised one, see the same settings for the denoiser, but this time it's accurate, the denoise shadow. It took us a little bit longer time to render with the um, uh, denoiser at the more advanced settings. That it's denoising the shadow, it's a channel, it's more accurate. Um, as you can see, compared to the fast denoiser, this is fast denoiser, this is 19 minutes and 40 seconds. Now also, 
um, keep in mind that this scene has uh, displacement on the um, on this uh, cloth uh, or carpet blanket whatever uh, type of geometry and it has a few grass um, modifiers or extensions so it has this uh, quite a lot of this of this fabric which is also takes a while to generate those uh, and even with all of that um, it rendered in 19 minutes and 40 seconds with the fast denoiser method now accurate method took it to almost extra 10 minutes, well, a little bit less than that, to the same sampling level. And um, yeah, so here's how it looks like. It's a bit hard to say if it's sharper or better or any, any noticeable difference. Um, can't tell if any. Um, I mean, the, the problem area that I've noticed here is this, um, what we call the, the entrapment area, where the, the ray is entrapped, so it's basically expected area of noise. And as you can see, if I can zoom a little bit, we, we started to get this artifacts, and let me just show you how noisy it was. So that's, that's, you see this area, the indirect area, the, the mouth, the indirect area. It's quite noisy. And then once we clean it up, you still see some of those artifacts here, like a little bit of, um, I don't know, what is it? Maybe compression, maybe just couldn't find the, uh, the proper color value around it. So it just get this a little bit of noise, but different type of noise. And then here, which is uh, accurate, we still have it. Not sure if that's extreme, but it is still there. So, okay, maybe it's a little bit better here. Um, is it that much better? Well, that's hard to say. It's, uh, I believe it's gonna be based on your, on, your, on your scene and how you're gonna handle it, how you're gonna light it. Um, in my case, the difference is not that big. I could easily save 10 minutes and go with, with the fast denoising method. Because beside that, I don't really see much of an um, improvement for the extra time that uh, we invest. In fact, what I would usually do is I would just take this render, which is not denoised, and save this render also, and then just get a mix of two. Because this one completely removes the noise, um, that beautiful grain here, you know, which, is, which adds a little bit of this um, film kind of feel. Uh, so I would do a mixture, maybe 80 to 20 or something like that. Um, so that's fast. That's accurate. Now, the other thing that what I, what I also did is I've uh, rendered the same scene. Everything is the same, but without denoiser at all, just to see how long would it take uh, to reach sampling level of 10 or how far could it go in terms of the sampling level if I let it run for the same 20 minutes, right? So here's the, uh, here's the elephant uh, rendered without any denoiser. See, it's switched off, um, as you see, and D, no denoiser. It like reached almost assembly level of 10 and it rendered almost 20 minutes. So as you can see, uh, this one rendered 19 minutes, 40 seconds with the denoiser. And this one rendered 19 minutes, 57 seconds. It doesn't have denoises. So that's what you get. It's, uh, is it good? It's okay. It's, but then, well, even in, 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 in fast method, denoising, you still have the, the very same uh, result if you want to go that way. But at the same time, you basically have a denoised version for free. It just takes well, what, an extra minute for the denoising itself. Um, which I don't know if that's counted here, probably not. Um, so that's that's also an interesting thing to consider. Oh, he just keeps the, the camera. So yeah, it's a 50mm camera, because I use the same camera for all of them. So it's a 50mm camera, and here's the, my camera settings. Um, now there's one more thing that I did uh, to experiment, is rendering the exactly same scene, but the elephant being in white, to see if that will bring a little bit more noise, um, so that's how it looks like. Now it rendered in the, with the fast uh, denoiser uh, settings. 
it went a little bit longer to reach sampling level of 10 uh, instead of 19 minutes and 40 seconds, like the green version or whatever jade marble kind of type of material. This one rendered uh, for 21 minutes and, 30, and, and 3 seconds um, to reach sampling level of 10. And that's a denoise. Let, let me show you the original. So here's their original render. Um, the, the material here is, um, is just drag and drop substance texture. Um, SBSR material. I just dropped it since it's so fast, so easy these this days to do it in Maxwell. It's quite noisy, but now uh, with the denoiser, it's uh, it's quite you know quite quite clean, uh, maybe too clean. Although I removed almost all of the denoiser, you see exactly the same settings. So this one has a little bit less details in terms of this little wings and stuff, and stuff, but it has a little less color variance also. So this area doesn't look as bad as. Uh, here, uh, here, our color is mostly kind of same tonality, so it looks more acceptable. Even though it's denoised with the same settings, basically same light, same camera, everything is the same. It just looks more le less noisy, less patchy, less uh, uh, distracting, more you know expectable. So it, it is you expect some grain in the dark areas. So that is it. Cheers. Happy rendering.